Minecraft has a huge player base. One of the niches is speedrunning, and these people found the craziest ways to obtain all of the advancements super fast. In this video, I will explain the general route of an all advancement speedrun and showcase difficult and hidden advancements such as uneasy alliance and how did we get here. The version 1.16 has 80 advancements in total. Some of them are very simple and you'll just get them on the fly, some require specific biomes and some of them require a good amount of luck. Which means that these advancements are basically out of your control until it happens. To already give you a general idea of how the road looks like, this is the division. Any percent and end busting, overworld, nether and endgame. Any percent within all advancements means that you want to kill the ender dragon as fast as possible. Why? Because killing the ender dragon opens the gateway to the outer end to obtain an elytra, which is just the best and fastest way to travel in Minecraft. To be able to travel with an elytra requires firework rockets, and this brings up the question, how do I reset for an all advancement speedrun? The best way to obtain a decent amount of gunpowder, which is a required item for rockets, are desert temples. A desert temple can also bring other useful items, such as enchanted books and early iron for tools to get into the nether fast. So basically what you are resetting for is a desert spawn with a nearby pyramid, a nether entry, which can be a ruined portal or lava pool, and possibly a village to have a reliable food source for the first part of the run. When entering the nether the first time, you want to have access to a bastion to guarantee enough pearls for a faster travel, strings for beds to use them as explosives to kill the dragon, and possibly 20 obsidian to get your second portal into the stronghold with the help of the ninja brain calculator. Of course you also need a fortress for the blaze rods to craft ender eyes, and here you want to task overlap by getting the advancement not quite 9 lives, managing your inventory space, clearing out the spawner and fighting the blazes. In the stronghold you want to find at least one of the two libraries since it contains bookshelves that you need to enchant your items later, books with possible good enchantments on it already, and paper which is the second item you need to be able to craft rockets. Then obviously the portal room to enter the end. Make sure to kill one silver fish. And this is where I want to introduce you to the advancement Monsters Hunted, where you must kill every hostile mob once. Once in the end, you can shoot the crystals if you want to, but it isn't required. Just make sure to pick up the dragon's breath with an empty bottle to get the advancement you need a mint, and kill the dragon by using a weapon, since killing it with bats only won't get you the advancement free the end. Now pick up the levels, obtain the dragon egg with the help of a torch or a string, and then find your gateway to the outer end. By finding end cities and elytras, you automatically get advancements for that, so nothing to worry about, you won't miss them. The advancements you do not want to forget about here is Sky's the Limit. The easiest way to get it is to get hit by a shulker bullet more than 50 blocks above the ground and then eating a cross fruit or pearling down. And here I want to introduce you to the advancement a balanced diet where you have to eat every single food except cake. You usually go to the outer end only once in a run, hence you want to eat one chorus fruit to check it on the list. Besides that, you want to scavenge loot from the end cities that will help you with the rest of the run. This contains a full diamond armor or at least additional diamonds to craft missing pieces, useful tools such as an efficiency unbreaking diamond pickaxe and looting swords, iron and gold, and you want to kill shulkers to get shulker boxes. Three boxes are fine, experienced runners only use two. The most difficult part here is getting a shulker into the overworld. This is necessary for the hidden advancement how did we get here, where the player has to have every single effect applied at once. One way to describe an all advancement speedrun could be preparing for how did we get here while doing side quests, but more about that throughout the video. To keep it short, by using a boat, a fishing rod and render distance manipulation, you can yeet the shulker over a long distance. Or you get lucky and the gateway is very close to the city. Same applies on the main end island, except you have to bridge out a bit further, since render distance manipulation does not work too close to the island. One more thing, when sending the shulker through the end fountain to bring it into the overworld, it will spawn at 0-0. But if you put an empty boat in first, it will be placed at world spawn, approximately there where you started your run. Back in the overworld, you first want to enchant your items, therefore you need lapis. The easiest way to get it is to apply the well-known bowl and dig down. Find the center of a clay patch in a river, face positive Z direction, and go 7 blocks forward. Dig down from there and you should find Lapis most of the time. Check the AA guide linked in the description for more information about that or just ask me in the comment section. Back to the enchantment setup, you'll need to make sure to get Unbreaking 3 for your Elytra, Looting 3 Sword for better rates when killing Creeper, Wither Skeletons and Drowns for a Trident, get Channeling on the book if it appears, one Silk Touch tool to be able to reposition Beehives for the advancement Total Bee Location, and a piercing 4 crossbow for the advancements Arbalistic and 2 birds 1 arrow. If you find unbreaking 3 and looting 3 before getting back into the overworld, you can actually skip enchanting until you obtain a trident. The reason for that is the first enchant. 
On a new generated world, the first enchantment is always going to be the same for every item, as long as you did not rejoin at any point. Some examples are channeling on the trident, looting 3 and unbreaking 3 on an iron sword, unbreaking 3 efficiency 4 on a diamond pickaxe, respiration 3 and prod 3 on a diamond helmet, and depth strider 2 on diamond boots when enchanting on 26 instead of 30 levels. After you get these most important ones, feel free to get quality of life enchantments such as smite or sharpness, respiration and aqua affinity and depth strider, or even fire protection on the armor for some nether stuff. Since channeling is pretty rare to get on a book, do not worry about it too much, just pick up your enchantment setup, go and obtain a trident and then cycle through the enchantment table again until you get channeling on the trident or spare book. And then there's still a chance of finding a channeling book or even other quality of life books in desert temples, for example mending for your elytra. And now the mid game starts. This is where you want to check as many things as possible in the long term advancements while simultaneously hunting drowns for nautilus shells and a trident. I suggest focusing on oceans during nighttime since hostile mob spawn rates are increased and taming cats for a complete catalogue and looting temples for mainly gunpowder, TNT and an enchanted golden apple during daytime. Since you're forced to travel, you'll find rare biomes eventually. Make sure to look out for the related hostile mobs, foods and animals when finding them. Most of the biomes do not require much more than flying through them, but there are biomes that need you to do some more work. Starting off with swamp, you'll need to find a swamp during nighttime to kill a slime. This is needed for the advancement monsters hunted, but you also want to collect the slime balls to craft leads which help a lot with breeding and leading a dolphin to your how do we get you setup at the end of the run. Try to find a swamp before the night at 1 hour 30 since slimes won't spawn during the new moon. In Badlands it is very easy to find an exposed cave spider spawner which is also needed for the monsters hunted advancement. If you somehow already killed a cave spider earlier in the run, for example in the mineshaft, just make sure to get every part of the Badlands for adventuring time, because sometimes Badlands Plateau takes a while to find. There's not much you can do wrong on a mushroom island. Breed the mushrooms, obtain mushrooms if preferred here, to eat a mushroom stew and prepare the suspicious stew with an azure bluet for how do we get here. Refill your milk buckets and get back into the ocean to loot more monuments for the gold box. Jungle requires a bit more and is also better done during daytime, because ocelots spawn much more then. So you want to breed ocelots, then find and breed pandas who spawn in a bamboo jungle on a much higher rate, get a cocoa bean to craft a cookie and get a melon. These foods are still obtainable in other places, but easy to get on the spot. Biome rise you also have to pay close attention since bamboo jungle and bamboo hills are comparably rare and you'll find jungle edge on connecting biomes except ocean. Snowy is the biome which is going to take the most time compared to other biomes, but also allows you to overlap many advancements. Besides finding the 6 related biomes, you want to kill a stray at night and find an igloo with a basement to get the advancement zombie doctor. Zombie doctor takes 3-5 to five minutes to happen after starting the curing and since you have to stay in a render distance to get the advancement, you overlap tasks such as killing an endermite, doing bullseye, eating beetroot and the soup, getting fishy business and hired help, basically anything that you can do and didn't do before. The nether is used to travel further and faster, especially when the overworld biomes aren't giving you anything useful. Combine this with doing miscellaneous tasks, for example breeding hoglins and striders, riding them, obtaining gold blocks for a full beacon, which is necessary for how do we get here at the end, and looting obsidian and netherite from bastions. Get three wither skulls when you find a convenient fortress and when leaving the nether again to check for thunder to get the advancement very very frightening, missing biomes or more ocean, make sure to combine this with a hoglin to convert it into a zoglin or uneasy alliance. Doing uneasy alliance actually became pretty easy with the help of a fishing rod, TNT and render distance manipulation. For the advancements cover me in debris and serious dedication, you need 20 ancient debris or in other words 5 netherite ingots. The reason why you do it as the last task in the nether is because of possible netherite in bastions which then saves time that you would need to spend on mining to find debris. Before you start the endgame, you need beehives with campfires in the spawn chunks for honey bottles and sticky situation later. Work times for bees are very limited so make sure to place them as soon as possible. You also need phantom membranes for brewing, so make sure to get the advancement 2 birds 1 arrow anytime after 1 hour 10 minutes. This is the earliest phantoms can spawn as long as you never went to bed. Switching to hard mode during night increases phantom spawn rates as well. 
You need to know about the location of an outpost for the voluntary exile and hero of the village advancement, the related effect and bad omen, as well as the location of a monument to get mining fatigue and the nearby ocean to get a dolphin to your how did we get here setup when it's time. If you have all the information about that, start building your setup by building a full beacon with haste and regeneration, build the conduit nearby, brew all your potions, kill the wither to obtain a nether star for the beacon and make sure to let the wither kill nearby passive mobs for wither rose and then get ready for the raid. Here you have to make sure to kill every kind of raid mob once for the monsters hunted advancement. To prevent missing one, get rid of the golem, trap the villagers and even kill them if they are too many so that they won't summon a new golem. There's different strats to speed up the raid, but to sum it up briefly, you can manipulate the spawn area of the waves by lowering the render distance and yeet the last raider with a banner out of the village to get hero of the village and bad omen on the spot. If you want to learn more about that, let me know and I might do a follow up video and check out the AA discord to keep up with the latest strats and resources. The effects of hero of the village and bad omen last 40 minutes. So don't stress, but since we are speedrunning, the next destination is the monument to get mining fatigue. This effect only lasts 5 minutes, so make sure to hurry now. Get a dolphin on a lead, head back to your how do we get here setup with all your prepared potions, enchanted golden apple, suspicious stew and puffer fish. Make sure to also have a spectral arrow for the glowing effect and then apply every effect in the right order. And this is how we got here. Oh my god, I forgot to put that in my, into my hotbar. Oh my god. But we are not quite done yet. Drink milk to get rid of the effects, grab your shit and head towards the end again, place down the crystals to respawn the dragon, and while you do that, get ready to get the very last advancement, getting an upgrade. Before the video ends, I want to mention that this video was made to entertain, hopefully, and if it did, make sure to leave a like now. And it is not meant to be a guide or instruction, which is also why I didn't mention every single advancement. I hope this video made you find interest in all advancements so that you want to try it out by yourself at some point. So if you want to learn more about that topic, make sure to join the MCAA speedrun discord which contains all of the information you need and check out the links in the description. Big thanks to everyone who contributed to the AA document, I couldn't have made this without them. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one.